Top 10 African Art Ancient Traditions and Modern Trends Welcome to this exciting video on the Top 10 African Art Traditions and Modern Trends. African art is a rich and diverse cultural heritage that spans centuries and reflects the unique customs and beliefs of the continent's diverse communities. From ancient sculptures and masks to contemporary paintings and installations, African art has inspired and influenced artists around the world. African art has a long history that dates back thousands of years, and it has changed significantly over that period. African art has captivated and inspired people all around the world for centuries, from ancient traditions to contemporary trends. Here are 10 Contemporary Trends and African Art Traditions. Nok Culture, 500 BC, 200 AD. The Nok Culture was one of the earliest known societies of Western Africa, located in modern-day Nigeria from 500 BCE to 200 CE. It is known for its unique terracotta sculptures and early ironworking. Artifacts were first discovered near the modern Nigerian town of Nok in 1943. They have triangular or oval-shaped eyes on human faces and elaborate hairstyles. All the clay used by the Nok people came from the same source, suggesting a central authority controlling the supply. The Nok culture used iron technology dating back to the 4th century BCE and possibly earlier. Archaeologists have found 13 iron smelting furnaces and other iron artifacts. They also used stone tools and metal, suggesting that metal materials were scarce. The legacy of the Nok people is difficult to determine due to the mystery around their identity and origins. Benin Kingdom, 1180-1897 AD The Edo people of southern Nigeria founded Benin in the 1200 CE, asking a prince from Ife to take control. Yuka was the first Oba, and the kingdom reached its greatest power and size under Oba Uwe the Great. Artists of the Benin Kingdom were famous for their bar-relief sculptures, plaques, and life-size head sculptures. The success of Benin was fueled by its lively trade. Benin was heavily involved in the West African slave trade, which provided a source of wealth for the kingdom. In the 1800s, the royal family fought for power and control of the throne, leading to civil wars and a British invasion of Benin in 1897. After that, the kingdom no longer played a governing role in West Africa but still serves as a government advisor. Ashanti Empire, 1670-1957 AD the Asante Empire was a West African state that occupied southern Ghana in the 18th and 19th centuries. It was active in the slave trade and unsuccessfully resisted British penetration in the 19th century. Ose Tutu was installed as Asante Hene in the 1670s and supplied slaves to British and Dutch traders. Apoku Ware and his successors established a strong centralized state, with an efficient bureaucracy and a fine system of communications. In 1807, Osei Bonsu occupied southern Fanti territory and outlawed the slave trade. The Asante defeated a British force in 1824 but made peace in 1831. In 1863, the Asante again challenged the British by sending forces to occupy the coastal provinces. In 1874, an expeditionary force under Sir Garnet Wolseley marched on Kumasi, sparking recessionary revolts in the northern provinces. Asante's king Kofi Kari Kari was deposed and Mensa Bonsu assumed power but was prevented from restoring Asante's imperial power by British political agents. Prempeh I declared Asante a British crown colony in 1902, and the Asante Hene was restored as a figurehead sovereign. Maasai beadwork. Naitalala Nabila and her mother, Nashala Depash, create beautiful Rafiki necklaces together. It is a ritual and duty in the Maasai community for every girl to learn beadwork, which symbolizes beauty, tradition, strength, and sometimes even social status. Beading is playing a new role in the Maasai community, as livestock is their only source of income due to hot and arid conditions. Maasai communities face drought and unproductive dry lands, so they turn to women to repurpose their traditional beadwork. Naitalala and her mother decided to start selling their beadwork to their friends and neighbors but were met with limited success started working in the Mara and set up the Women's Empowerment Center in Narek County, where women can come together to bead and find an international market for the beadwork. To date, more than 1,400 women can earn a living through beading. Naitalala has passed on beading skills to her daughters, but their priority is school. Ndebeli Art Ndebeli Art is a form of traditional art that originated from the Ndebeli people of South Africa. It is a unique and vibrant art form that is characterized by its use of geometric patterns and bold colors. 
Ndebele art has a rich cultural history and is deeply rooted in the beliefs and traditions of the Ndebele people. The origins of Ndebele art can be traced back to the early 19th century when the Ndebele people were first introduced to European trade beads. These beads were incorporated into traditional clothing and jewelry, and soon became a central feature of Ndebele art. Over time, Ndebele's art evolved to include intricate house painting, beadwork, and textiles. One of the most distinctive features of Ndebele art is its use of geometric patterns. These patterns are often repeated symmetrically to create a sense of balance and harmony. The colors used in Ndebele art are also bold and vibrant, with bright oranges, blues, yellows, and greens being commonly used. Ndebele house painting is one of the most recognizable forms of Ndebele art. The exterior walls of Ndebele homes are painted with bright geometric patterns and symbols that have spiritual significance. These patterns and symbols are believed to provide protection and ward off evil spirits. The painting of homes is often done by women, who pass down the tradition from generation to generation. Contemporary African Art Contemporary African art is a portmanteau term that includes variants that may be as recent as yesterday or over a century old. It is divided into three subcategories, export art, urban-slash-vernacular art, and academic art. Export art is art produced for foreigners who are not near neighbors, often sold to brokers whose sales are overseas. Some export works were made specifically for foreign patrons in the distant past, but their early date will exclude them from the contemporary category. The late 19th century beginning of colonialism marked the start of the contemporary export art subcategory. Traditional artists began to adapt their practices for foreign patrons, producing different kinds of objects that foreigners desired. In areas where there were few traditional arts to inspire foreign commissions, new industries sprang up, such as the Kamba of Kenya, which produced realistic animal figures and other carvings for export sale. Demand for certain art has outstripped suppliers' abilities to source carvings, such as Asante figures meant to induce fertility. Graffiti and Street Art African cities like Lagos, Accra, and Johannesburg have become hubs for street art and graffiti. Many African street artists are using their art as a way to express social and political commentary, and to reclaim public spaces. Fashion and Design African fashion designers and textile makers are making a name for themselves on the international fashion scene. Traditional African fabrics, like wax prints and kent cloth, are being used in new and innovative ways to create modern clothing designs. Digital Art Digital art is a form of art that uses digital technology as an essential part of the creative process. Post-African futures is a term used to highlight the aesthetic mechanisms and critical engagements that stem from cultures of technology in Africa. Tegan Bristow's research has highlighted the need to investigate how these mechanisms are being re-explored and what the intention is of African artists in engaging with aesthetics similar to those of Afrofuturism. Dance Dance is an important part of African worship, as it was believed to be accepted by God as satisfactory veneration. It expresses feelings of worship, social communication, supplication, passionate relational feelings, and transitional life stages. It also communicates virtues, values, and teachings about social manners. Dance is an experience that moves us beyond the material to the intangible, and is a way to express ourselves when words are deficient. In Africa, cultural or social dances are movements that embody cultural values and standards. Each clan in Nigeria has someone devoted to designing and passing along the clan's customary moves, which are passed down through generations. Music and dance are a regular part of daily existence in Africa, as they communicate feelings, express soul-changing experiences, and bring together networks of people who share common values. Dance can build a sense of security and accomplishment and offer opportunities as icebreakers in meeting new people and making new friends. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and we look forward to sharing more exciting explorations of art and culture with you in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one.